Welcome to Way Back When with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Blend Radio's Way Back When History Show. Today, we are going to be talking about Springfield, Illinois, and apparently it is amazing. We're talking about Abraham Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln, and um, his life in Springfield, his life in general, um, and Debbie Stone. You know travel writer Debbie Stone. We call her the fire monkey uh, for many reasons. She was gifted that name, but she went there recently. In fact, she's no stranger to Illinois. She's, uh, you know, from Chicago, but she got to spend some good, serious time in Springfield, and she visited the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum, the Lincoln Home National Historic Site, and many more destinations. Of course, you know she had some good bites along the way. Some good food um, is out there. So you can read her article. It's up on Blend Radio and TV.com right now. It'll be featured in the upcoming issue of Way Back When magazine. And of course, if you're going to go to Springfield, go to visit SpringfieldIllinois.com. So welcome back, Fire Monkey. How are you? I am doing well, and I am excited to talk about uh, Lincoln's legacy, which is alive and well in Springfield. It's huge. I mean, when you think about presidents, I think when we all think about who are the, who's the best president, right? Uh, so we all have some favorites and everything, but I think we all kind of look at, he's like the one unifier. I think Teddy Roosevelt's got a little bit of that too, but he seems to be the one that we all like say he's he was like the one you know for this country in a way yeah i think you know he's just um you know and and if you go to springfield i mean everything he's omnipresent in terms of uh that town and you know he spent uh a, a number of years of his life uh up until the time when he before he left uh for dc you know um and thinking that he would eventually come back to this place that he loved. Uh, the people uh, of the residents there loved him as well, and he thought he would be back after his uh, his terms. And unfortunately, when he left, uh, he didn't know that he would not be back. He would yeah. be back in, in terms of, you know, them create, burying him and, you know, creating a tomb for him. But um, it's, a very, it's a very interesting town in that respect, and I think... Um, people who go there uh, obviously go there. Most of the, I would say most people go there because of uh, of Abe Lincoln. Although, um, as I say in my story, there are some other things for people to do. Um, it's not all about Abe. There is a huge uh, Route 66 uh, connection That's there. That's right. And uh, so you know, people do come for that as well. Um, but you know, Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln's it. You know, Lincoln's the dude. He is, and it is the capital is the city. The capital yep. city, I love capital cities. You know, we're doing a map of capital cities that we visited as we travel the country. It's been a little difficult over the last year and a half with all the <laughs> political stuff, I'm just going right. to say. But but um, there is something when you see those buildings, you know, mm. at night and at the day, like oh. I, I, I kind of like them at night. There's something, they stand out, they're almost like a lighthouse in a way. Yes, uh, you know they're all lit up usually, and and you know this one is is quite grand um, in terms of capitals. I think it's, uh, as I say, the tallest domed capital in the country. It is taller than even the uh, U.S. Capitol in D.C. So it is a a wow. very uh, handsome uh, building, you know, and it you know takes precedence there. So that's that's an also an interesting tour to take as well. Um, and, uh, it, you know, for people to go inside the Capitol building, and there's lots of history. Um, you know, there's artwork, history, and you get to go into the chambers. And, uh, yeah, so to me, it, it's, it's well worth it. I love going into the Capitol buildings. I like going on the tours. I think they're, they really give a, a, a piece of the, the place that you're at. And often, as we well know, Capitals are not necessarily in big cities, you yeah. know. Exactly. And so it's interesting to, to, you know, hear and see, you know, why did this capital get put there or why is it here? And it's not always, you know, it's not going to be in Chicago, Illinois, which would be, you know, to most people would be like, well, why wasn't it there? You know, and really there is a lot to do with Lincoln, that the reasoning behind that. You see, that's the thing. I have this thing now about like, you know, like Carson City, they moved it. <laughs> like they moved right. like, the capital. They did all these things. And we were recently in Salem, Oregon. I mean, you could park yes. right there and just walk across from the university, and there you are at the right. Capitol, and in a right. rose garden. And I'm like, well, this is so accessible. And I think the you there are um, 
there's always public art and statues and yes. you, you, even yes. during COVID time, which we're still in. So I, I'm just really getting to this point. Everybody look at a website, make a phone call before you go. It's going to yes. change. It's up and down, turn around. Uh, but, you know, so a lot of times we weren't able to get into the Capitol building, uh, right. depending on where we were when. Right. But even on the outside, if they were closed, a lot of them are actually under construction. Lincoln, we went to Lincoln, Nebraska and um, saw his sculpture. So see, look look at that, <laughs> like right. another capital city. And yep. at that point, they were actually in session while we were there. And we actually heard what they were talking about on the radio when we left. I was like, dude, if I'd <laughs> only known, I'd go in. They were, they were voting on marijuana. I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I was like, what's <laughs> going on? And I was trying to get an aide to move out of the way of Lincoln so I could take his photo. <laughs> but, anyway, but, but that was what was going on. But, you know, there's, there's, so much interpretation you can get on even on the grounds on the outside right and you live in a capital city you live in santa fe one of the oldest is it one of the oldest ones i think territorial so you know territorial capital exactly you know so it's it's but it is fascinating i love i love visiting the capital and if you can't get in like you said just the architecture of the capitals are very interesting and different as well you know and uh so i to me it's it's uh it's always interesting, no matter if you can get in or not. Well, I do want to say this about uh, Springfield, the Capitol building being the top, tallest, right? Um, right? I find it fascinating because you did the Chicago architecture tour. Like you went yeah. to the skyscrapers on the water, the riverboat. Right. And um, I still love that story. And Chicago's architecture is so interesting, too, because of the Chicago fire and all of the everything oh, yes. that played together. Do you think Springfield kind of gave a nudge to Chicago about the skyscrapers because the Capitol building was so tall. I wonder about that. I wonder too, but I have a feeling that it uh, really was a matter with Chicago. It was a matter of, um, you know, after the Chicago fire and the town was rebuilt, they had architects that were really notable that at the time were doing some very, you know, avant-garde stuff for that time. And that's what came out of it. And they were determined to make Chicago, you know, rise again, so to speak, you know, but, you know, really to make it, you know, as a hub, a transportation hub and industry and the economy and just, you know, it was going to be kind of the titan of that particular region, you know, so, uh, yeah, but, but, uh, you know how I think in all years in history, you know, people building, they want to build bigger, taller, you know, I mean, it's just Mm -hmm. kind of like a, it's just kind of something that people want to do, you know, it's always like, okay, what's the tallest building in the world now? What's the, you know, you know, and then a year later, something else is the tallest building in the world, you know? So, um, I think that's just kind of a, a, you know, urge for people to go higher, you know? So now let we go from the tallest to the biggest, which is the biggest presidential library, right? Is the one oh. for Abraham Lincoln. That's the biggest in the country? But I don't know if it's the biggest in the country, but it is certainly sizable. And the museum, the, the Abraham Lincoln Presidential Museum, which I mentioned, is a place for people uh, to start, I think, with when they come to Springfield because of the just the detailed background and the amazing immersive experience that you have when you go through this museum. And that's the museum itself is like 50,000 square feet, and it's just you know, an entire city block. And that, when you talk about the library, it, it's, this is the largest presidential museum. So, um, yeah, yeah, not, that's I don't know about the library, but it's the largest presidential museum and it's an experience museum. So it's one that, you know, where you can actually be quote unquote entertained while learning about stuff. And I think that is the best way because people, you know, they get immersed if there are things that are, you know, they can interact with different types of technology, but it brings to life uh, the past in ways that I think are engaging. I think especially for the youth. And, you know, we we all kind of get like, oh, history, you're going to have to learn dates and times and like none of us really care about that, right? We want to know the story. And if you can have that interact, because then it becomes part of your experience, like you experience something. So it's a way to get it. It's immersive, which I love, you know, museums moving into that. Um, in your article, you talk about, that we get into that part is, I want, I want to get into the ghost part of it, uh, but the ghost of the library, but you talk about um, the whispering gallery which to me yeah. is kind of, it, it almost feels like what we're going through in social media in this country. It's like, I feel like Facebook and 
Twitters and all of that stuff with all the political stuff feels like the whisper gallery in a way. You know, I, I think you're, I think you're right. But I think in terms of the fact, I realized that, you know, when I was going through there and that these are these voices that you hear whispering these like rumors, these terrible rumors about uh, Lincoln and his wife, Mary. And then you see these cruel caricatures on the wall and these terrible political, you know, these political cartoons. And I'm thinking, you know, things have not much changed, to be honest with you, because there are still those things. And, you know, there's all these, you know, there's all uh, vicious, uh, you know, uh, slamming and, and you know, um, rumors that always get started. Mm-hmm. And th- th- it's still the same way. Um, you know, back then they didn't have social media, but their their social media was, you know, basically kind of word of mouth and also via cartoons and, you know, things, p- pictures and things that, you know, people could create and then put up and pass around. But um, the, the, the same thing went on, you know, when you think about it, went on back, you know, that was the na- 1860s, you know. So wow. it's, it's uh, you know, Lincoln lived through, I mean, he had a very turbulent um presidential time i mean think about it and it was just uh you know a very challenging time for the country just like it is in our country today but um definitely uh you know you kind of look at that and you say huh, huh mm. i guess uh i guess turbulence people are people. is really a part of that yeah it, and it, it it doesn't necessarily mean that it's indicative of one error or not the other you know and also thinking about her role as as being, you know, the first woman, you know, we often get into a museum. I remember being in the State Capitol Museum in Little Rock and seeing all these, what women wore uh, through the ages, especially first ladies. And I thought, I think about, you know, his wife, right. Mary, and, you know, we, I, I think we've talked about this before, but Nancy and I got a chance in Springfield, <laughs> Springville. Oh my gosh, now I can't even, it's Springfield, Kentucky, um, when we went to um, her home where it was, this, you know, yes. just a small cabin and they got married there and their marriage certificate is in the in the courthouse there. And they have a museum dedicated to him. But I mean, we're talking small town America. I mean, like Main Street, maybe three blocks, four blocks, right. you know, right. if we're really lucky. And I mean, small blocks, right? Um, and right. so when you go out and you drive to the state park and you see how they lived and when they were dating, they were courting at that time. And then you see Mordecai's house around the corner. It's this big mansion. But not a, It's big, but it's like a big farmhouse kind of thing. So you think about where they came from. Next thing you know, she lived in this tiny cabin. She, she sewed. She did all this work. And then you think about her with her ball gowns and people thinking she was lavish. Did they not see where she came from? Well, you know, they, I think that, you know, it was a tough, a tough crowd is how I want to say it. When they went to Washington, you know, she was, she was a complex woman. He was a complex man. They had a complex, um, you know, uh, situation, um, although they both, you know, adored their, their children, um, lavished on them. And, uh, but she, you know, she, uh, spent money, uh, to, to renovate, um, you know, and she went shopping in New York and she decorated, mm-hmm. de- redecorated the white house. And so, you know, I think no matter what you do in life, there's always somebody who's going to say, it's wrong, or they're going to say something nasty about you. And I think, you know, she probably was not prepared for the kind of attacks that she got uh, in the papers and, you know, from the society ladies. I think it was probably a very difficult um, adjustment for her. And I think you really have to have a thick skin. We know that as you yeah. know, you're in a gold, you're in a goldfish bowl, you know, yeah. anybody in politics is in a goldfish bowl. And uh, so, you know, you have to, you know, uh, kind of accept and assume that's going to happen. I think it was just a bit, uh, she was, I'm sure, taken aback by that. And, and I know that it affected her. You know, she was very hurt by it and, you know, disturbed by what they said. Um, but they, Mary and Abe had quite the partnership. Um, and I think I mentioned, I don't know, I didn't mention my story, but they, like when he won the nomination or when he won mm-hmm. the election, he came home to the house where she was waiting and he walked in the door and he said, we won Mary. And it was a, we, not I won, but we mm-hmm. won. That's and, nice. 
Yeah, and so it was like a joint kind of partnership there, you know, and she was very, um, you know, ambitious too. And uh, so, you know, it really was something that they kind of jointly, jointly went in together with, you know. This, this is, you know, really incredible when you think about this museum giving so much history. Then there's this, you know, huge library. And, you know, then they're getting, you know, interactive, immersive, and you're seeing all these different stories. I mean, how long would you say you would do the museum and then and then the library? I mean, because to me, there's so many stories. You could be there for a You know, month. the Presidential <laughs> Museum itself, you could be there for a couple hours. Um, if It depends on how detailed do you want it to go, how much you want it to, you know, get into it and read, you know, specific details about um, and how much you wanted to be immersed in it. You know, they have a couple of different theaters uh, where you can have these very, uh, there's holographic and special effects on them, and um, they tell different types of stories regarding Lincoln and regarding history, and it's, they're wonderful. And so you can, you know, do those, and then you could go walk around and go into the the uh, cabin, uh, you know, replica and walk through all the different uh, periods of, of Lincoln's life. Um, so you could spend a couple hours. The library, which is across the street, only the bottom floor is really open to the public. Um, mm. You have to have an appointment and reservation to uh, go to the to the upper uh, echelons of the library, so to speak. If you're doing genealogy research or research on history or Springfield research, you need to have an appointment because um, that's just the way they do it. And you'll you know need to, of course, I think you know if you're handling documents, you have to have the the gloves and you know all that kind of stuff. But the 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 bottom floor, you can walk around and the, it, it's basically there's art and some sculptures and uh, 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 rotating exhibits as well. But the museum is really where it's at for for visitors, you know. And then from from the museum, it's to Lincoln's home, you know, mm. and his his home in, in Springfield, which is now a historical uh, district and a historical area that they, the park district has, uh, the park, park service has completely uh, created, and it's wonderful. And so you can, you know, walk down the street and you can take a tour of his home, which is also fascinating. And uh, you know, so so you could go from the you know go from the museum to the home and get this very wonderful experience. Not to mention all the other sites. Wow, this is amazing! I want to go back to the ghost of the library because ah! I can't leave that out. I'm sorry. I'm like, no way. I, I said that, and there's. I want to talk about that because now this is back at the museum, so not actually at the right. Abraham Lincoln Presidential Library, but the ghost no, of the library the because this yeah this is in the museum and. <laughs> You've got a floating quill in the air. <laughs> yeah, this you know, there's this there's a live actor, a host who you know welcomes you in. Um, there's like kind of a library set up on the stage, and then you know he demonstrates you know that the the presidential archive, all the kinds of things that you can can learn and discover. And as he's talking about that, and you know he's he's mentioning all these different things there's like the so, the ghosts of civil war soldiers come up and different objects and even lincoln and mary they you know they they appear they disappear and this quill in midair begins writing uh, in the president's handwriting and you know the the message is all about you know the these are objects and and these connect us to the past and um also, they can be, you know, foretell the future as well. Um, so mm. that was, I loved that, you know, because it was a combination of, you know, an actor, a real life actor, but also all these really cool holographic uh, figures and special effects. That was just fabulous, as well as the other one, which was called Lincoln's Eyes. And it really, um, you know, talked, I mean, his eyes were, you looked at his eyes and that was a focus, but it was presenting all the issues, all the turbulence in his presidency and using special effects, using a projection, and um, it was it was told by the artist that was commissioned to actually make the painting of him uh, for the front of Union Theater. So it and there's a lot of Civil War scenes. It's very it's very very gripping as well as the the slavery depictions. So you know it, it the, those you know and people are just kind of like they're just really held spellbound by these types of of productions, I think, which really bring the past to life. I think this is exciting, too, because, I mean, when you think about Lincoln, you know, there's so much that we've traveled. 
you know, going to Gettysburg and then even, you know, right. going to the Sequoias, right? You've been, you were in Sequoia yep. National Park, you yep. know, yep. and, you know, some of the trees you got General Sherman and General Grant and yep. all of them have connections back to Lincoln, some not so happy. Um, and it was a very interesting time, even about what the Republican versus the Democrat parties were and how Lincoln ruled. And he did have a strong fist about things. You know, when yes, he, he said no, he, he meant it, you know. So and he was very I had a lot. I think what it is, is he had a he had integrity, true integrity. Yeah. And he also had he, he really had he stuck to his convictions um, as much as possible. I mean, he felt strongly about certain issues and um you know thankfully that that we had a president there that felt strong yeah about certain issues you know so um, but the, you know, the it, emancipation it, it was, that was hard. something yes. in your article i got like you know we forget about this you know we have these different yes. you know holidays and observances but do we really remember what the emancipation proclamation was about right. and so i think that's really important that you brought up it was really it was not really all about slavery. And you think no. about what our country is going through now, you know, and going through that history and how some of it is, is still churning up because it's not like something you can just close your eyes about and you shouldn't. No. You know, and so you think about like, oh, well, the Civil War was to help, you know, slavery go away. And that's not all entirely no. true. People don't understand that this was a document that really was created to also, you know, take this union that was, you know, disintegrating and to try to bring it together again, to unite again. Um, so, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, people always just assume everything is about, was about the slavery, but it really was, you know, it was far less about that than about saving that mm -hmm. the union, you know. So, mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, when you go into the Ford's Theater area, you know, it's kind of, Eerie, you, you know what's going to happen, but it still doesn't prepare you for the actual assassination. Um, and, you know, you learn a little bit about John Wilkes Booth and, you know, uh. conf uh, Confederate sympathizer and, you know, everything. But, it, it, you know, it still is a, is still shocking. It's still a shocking You know, well, experience. something, yeah, a shooting is just, it's shaking, you know. Um, and you think now they just left that JK, uh, JFK's dude out that supposedly shot at him that he's free he's like out on the streets you know it's kind of weird that's a weird feeling um it, it, yeah it it, is and there's weird. like and, he might not he might be completely innocent we don't so you know it's just this weird it's it's odd um I, just going to lincoln you know when he passed or was assassinated i should really say they didn't they put his body on a train or something like yeah, went. it was the largest. It was the largest procession ever of a train, you know, going from D.C. back to to Springfield, stopping along the way, you know, and you know, thousands and thousands of people, um, you know, there to to uh, pay their respects um, along the way, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was a a huge huge production uh, mm. for them to do that, but it was, you know, so many people wanted to be able to pay their respects, and so it went from, you know, town to town as it went along, you know, and wow. uh, then they have, you know, the, the, the tomb for him, which is a sizable, sizable. The nose. Tomb. The nose. Yeah, the nose. Yes, there's a sculpture of him. And people started, like, rubbing his nose for good luck. And over the years, it, you know, turned gold. You know, like, when, yeah. you, when you rub rub something and it just, it, and so you've got this gold nose. But, you know, people... Just they started this tradition. I thought I found it. I found it amazing. I'd heard about it before I went, but when you go there and you look at the size of it, and you also look at how how it's been rubbed so much, you're like, whoa! <laughs> yeah, I don't. It's, I don't know if they'll let us cool. do it now during COVID, or maybe maybe oh, they people just, people were doing it. They're people cleaning his nose it. off. You know, well, what well, do you, think? you know, you, that, you kissed it, the it, Blarney Stone. So what are oh, they yeah, doing now? Oh. I wonder. You know? Oh, I, I don't think they're kissing the stone anymore. I really, yeah. I don't know that. Well, I, I think, I, I, you know, I rubbing that. Lincoln's nose, kissing a blood. It's interesting what we do as humans, you know. Yeah, for, for whatever, you know, reasons, whether we, you know, think it's a way to be close to him or like we said, for, for good luck, you know, it's just, you know. It would I, I just, crack me up. On Halloween, they should make him sneeze. Like, oh, you know, 
you know, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's oh, about the nose. I know, I know. <laughs> you know, we were supposed to do this on Zoom and have that as the background. So, and maybe it's a good thing we're just doing this as audio today uh, from technical things that are going on. But I'm not Zoom's fault, but I'm just saying, you know, yeah. we probably would have been pulling his nose or something. Uh, so it's probably, uh, and maybe his spirit said, you will not be doing that, ladies. We will behave no. ourselves. But it, exactly. this is such an experience. Like it, you, There's the depot you went to, uh, the Lincoln Home National Historic Sites. You saw it there living like, so you got to see basically their home when it was like a cottage all the way to what their home was like as in living in the White House. That's yeah, amazing. So, so, you know, they had a simple home, but then they added on because they had several children, several boys. And um, so, you know, they showed us, you know, how they added on to this house. Um, and, you know, he could walk to his law offices and, uh, you know, the roads, you know, were definitely not paved roads. And there was all sorts of different people living in his neighborhood. And um, there's a very cool nameplate on his door that reads A. Dot Lincoln. And other, that was the only uh, identification for uh, the residency. And then the parlor is where the Republican Party, of which he was a member, the committee formally notified him of his nomination. And, you know, you'll, you'll tour through the kitchen and through all the different, you know, the sitting rooms and the master rooms and the kids' rooms. And, um, you know, there was no indoor plumbing. There was just an outhouse and chamber pots that they showed us hidden under the beds. Mm -hmm. And uh, I loved what the guide said because he said, you know, touch the staircase railing because that is, is still original and you'll be as close to shaking Abe's hand as you can when you mm. touch that railing. So it was kind of a, a, a cool, a, a cool comment to make, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. So you learn, you know, you, you got a see, nose you, and a railing. <laughs> yeah, you got a railing exactly. And but, um, what yeah. happened to the home? The home. The only surviving son um, was Robert, um, and he uh, inherited. He got the the home. And then he sold it to the people of Illinois for just a dollar, um, giving cool. it to Illinois. And the state preserved it, and then they donated it to the uh, U.S. government. And the National Park Service then took over and created this, like, you know, uh, site, an 1860 site, and giving you a taste of the historical area. And uh, so there's a couple of other homes in there. You can go in with some self-guided exhibits and... It's very, very cool. The tour, you need to go in and make reservation. By the way, everything in Springfield that you see, with the exception of the museum, is free. Um, That's nice. It's amazing. And some things you need, you know, like the Lincoln Home, you need to uh, just get a reservation for at the visitor center. But everything is, is free except for the museum. So it's really a wonderful boon for, for visitors. You know, that's another thing about capital cities. A lot of things are free, especially when it right. comes to, you know, history like that. How can right. you charge people to go into, a, you know, right? that's part of our history. It's kind of like our National Park Service there's admission fees for like Yosemite and stuff, but you get a year pass or something, you know, it's sure. really cost effective when you think about what, you know, we pay for Disneyland or something like that, or even yeah. going out to dinner, but um, and we got to talk about food, but um, you know, going back to, you know, Springfield, I'm, you know, Kentucky, it was Springfield where we were. And even his boyhood home, his actual boyhood home is in Hodgkins. I think Hodge. Ah, I, you know, I, I need to go back there, but it's out, you know, in Kentucky, central Kentucky in bourbon country, by the way, bourbon horses in history. And we, you know, his boyhood home is there. And then they've got like two parts of the park site. And right. we didn't get to go there because our trip got twirled around, you know, it's, it's the way it works, but we were supposed to, and we've interviewed the park ranger there and an interpreter and it's very fascinating because it was about these springs and so we always gathered you know as humans like Michener always talked about it we we always gather where there's water sources you'll yes. find human history and I Absolutely. find this interesting that he lived like his life started right by Springfield and you know and here it is he ends yep. up in Springfield Illinois so what's going on with the Springfields they're all over is it just yeah, well, I, Springfield I, is a, it seems like it's a common you know, yeah, so it's like names Smith, that repeat right? themselves <laughs> in the country, you know, it's like every town has a main street or whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's a repetition throughout the yeah, country with it's, certain it's, names, you know? Yeah, 
but I mean, he did, he went there and ended there basically in a way, you and, know, in a, and it's, and it's interesting, you know, he was in this, you know, one room cabin and, um, you know, he taught himself basically to read. He had like, you know, I, I don't even, he had just a few years of actual, uh, of, you know, kind of any kind of formal education. He taught himself the law and, um, when he moved to um, New Salem, which is outside of Springfield, um, they now have the, the New Salem State Historic Site. So you'll be able to see him when he was uh, a young man uh, before he moved to Springfield. And, uh, you know, he was a store clerk and then he was a postmaster wow. there. And, um, you know, he was uh, he taught himself the law, as I said, and he people hired him to do wills and do contracts. And, you know, so uh, and they also it's where he also kind of got his debating chops there as well. And he joined a debate club and he used to, you know, just talk with the people. And he seemed to have a way, a kind of a folksy way of talking to people, of listening to them and of his manner. You know, he wasn't hoity toity. You know, he came from such. Yeah, yeah, he came from such very, very poor, poor and modest roots. And so, um, you know, but that's so you can go there and there's, you know, the buildings are there and, um, you know, you can go through them and you can see the uh, people that are dressed in costume and they're talking to you about the village and they they're presenting themselves as the blacksmith or the cooper or whatever. And so you can, you know, learn about what life was like back there in this very small town um it's you know been basically rebuilt over the original sites but they're authentic they, you know they really try to stay true to the authenticity of the time mm. and uh so once again it's a way for history to come alive uh through you know this this experience and through talking to these costume characters like williamsburg on a, on a, on a smaller level but in interp interpreting for you which is is wonderful and people love to ask you know the questions and they're telling you and telling you the stories and i you know i i love that kind of stuff so that was a lot of fun for me i i want to go yeah you told me you know, you know nancy and i are all into the midwest now you know oh gosh yes yeah you got it yes. and it's like i'm i'm glad you're on the shows talking about the midwest because uh, you know, we're, we're, I, almost, I want to beat a, a copper pot around everywhere, like, hello, there's cool yeah. stuff. When we were in Madison, Wisconsin. Another capital. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. I, um, I wanted to bring that up because it's a capital city. I know you know Madison. Um, yeah, when I went we to were there, there for a while. Yeah. yeah, the green spaces, the water, obviously. Uh. Is, is, spring, is, you know, Springfield that way, too, in regards as a capital city, that there is a lot of parks and you know, there are things parks to do outdoors. And, and yes, there are parks. There are you know people that if they want a you know chance for recreation to take a walk to go outside. There's um, wonderful you know some nice nature settings, and so yeah, that it's it's I think it's it's nice in that respect that it, it offers that. Um, and so you know if you're if you uh, are wanting a, a break from Abe, so to speak, you know head for head for one of those outdoor uh, green spaces. And of course, Route 66 attractions and, you know, you, you know, your article, you yep. talk about shopping, antique shops, flea markets. One thing you did talk about is the Dana Thomas house, uh, one of Frank yep. Lloyd Wright's uh, prairie yep. style homes. And when we were in Madison, it was, it was part of the Frank Lloyd Wright trail. And yep. um, I, I was actually thinking the house that we were sitting for, sitting in, pet sitting in, it's actually kind of a, I think, reminiscent of Frank Lloyd Wright actually when I, I'm going to have to now look at the whole thing and uh, but everyone uh, Debbie wrote an article about the house it's up on blend radio and tv.com and actually be featured in our garden gossip home and garden show coming shortly and you'll hear an interview we're about to record tomorrow right but everyone you'll hear it in a few weeks uh, of uh, you know talking about this amazing house and how this whole thing got started and how a woman was actually funding the project it's super it's a it's an amazing story so i can't wait for that but um besides houses and frank lloyd wright and abraham lincoln i mean you've got all these amazing people in this uh wonderful city capital city 
Um, capital cities need to have good food because if you're going to do politics, you might you need to do it on a <laughs> you, you need to fuel up. And if you're going to listen to politics, you need to fuel up on something. And you may need to have don't, wine. Yeah, don't don't have an empty don't don't have an empty stomach. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, and you may need wine afterwards. And apparently, there's wine and and breweries, and uh, so you can have a libation yep. at the end of it all. And you might need it. <laughs> yeah, de- definitely. But you know, you start your day with that that. Uh, French bakery, the incredibly delicious, and you go on from there, and you know uh, you have a, a wonderful dinner at the uh, uh, oldest restaurant in town at Muldeners, and uh, you know you you enjoy the cuisine, and you feel like okay, you know this is where this is where it all happened at one time back in the eighteen eighteen uh, eighties, and it's you know mm. kind of cool to think think to yourself that there are people who are you know eating and drinking uh, in in that in that that same spot so yeah. that's that's kind of a must i think if people want to tie in with the history it's interesting too you, you know talking about that uh Muldaners. Molden, am i saying this correctly i think it's, it's Muldaners. Uh, Muldaners. Yeah. okay yeah, it, yeah so being so old like it was in 1884 um just going back i wonder if they're looking at the well, the, wait, they have a, a queen of Sheba cake. Okay, so I'm just saying, that's, that sounds good. <laughs> but um, thinking about when they're doing their menus, they got to, I mean, I see like beef wellington and pork chops right. with gooseberry sauce. Now that starts to sound right. very British to me. It's it's kind of going to almost like what, what, we, what you would get in England almost. I, it sounds British to me. But you know, I mean, we were we were you know yeah. ruled by the Brits for a long time. You know what I mean? So there was a lot of British, and then we a lot their of British tea. influence. <laughs> and then yep. we tossed their tea in the harbor. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But no, I you know there it it it's fun. I mean, I think food is is a, a wonderful integral part of travel for for so many people. You know, and mm. it's fun to be able to try you know something that's local or something that's historic something that's traditional whatever it is you know and mm. uh, you know to me i always like seek out and think okay so you know where 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 do i eat i mean that's part of the fun yeah, yeah. and moxos you went to moxos and apparently they uh, have yeah. really big big peanut butter <laughs> <Huge> cookies, cookies. <laughs> Like, seriously, when you've been walking yes. and doing all these sites, listen, sustenance is important. Oh, my gosh, yes, especially, you know, I mean, you need You're something in the middle to have of the, the afternoon, cookie. you know. I mean, You get the hey, big cookie. <laughs> I get the big cookie, is right. And, and the mac and cheese. I have Listen, <laughs> I will. Oh, I God, would, yes. Oh. Seriously, I will have a meal that is just, you know, mac <sighs> and cheese. Like, you don't have to put all the extra. If it's really well done, like, I could. No. And yes. I've been craving mac and cheese. And I think it started from your article. I think it's all your fault. I'm just going to say, because I will do like, seriously, good mac and cheese. And there's so many variations. Oh. You could put, oh my God, in Santa Fe, you can put green chilies. You could have a yep. Christmas mac and cheese in yep. your city, yep. right? Yep. But, yeah. But um, I, lo- I mean, mm. you know, mac and cheese, mac and cheese has been elevated to a dish oh. that that you know i mean it's it's a it, more sophisticated dish you know depending on what how it's done what you put in it but i mean it has really been elevated you know one of the best is it, you know lake yep. charles louisiana there is a hot dog shop that had just opened up restaurant <laughs> like a brewery hot dog right. thing oh i wish i could remember their name but they had a mac and cheese dog so oh my they God. took little balls of mac and cheese and deep fry them and put them on your hot dog <laughs> and i'm just saying that was my favorite hot dog and um it's a good thing we had to go hiking in the swamp and look for gators later that was a few years ago and i hope they're still there you know with all the hurricanes happening and you know and but um that oh i'll have to dig that up and send you a photo of that because that was pretty oh, memorable yes. Because, yeah, you can do a lot with that. But I'm excited. We'll be chatting with you next about the Dana Thomas House. Uh, Everyone, visit SpringfieldIllinois.com is the website to go to. And also read Debbie's article on Blend Radio and TV.com. Just type in Springfield, Illinois, and you'll find it. Or just look at Debbie in our expert department. And keep up with us. Uh, If you sign up for our newsletter, you'll get our different digital magazines in your email box. Uh, We're working on a big blend radio and TV magazines turned into eight different magazines. And one of them is way back when history magazine. And, you know, we've had this show for 
years, literally over 10 years. And so it's time it has its own magazine. So it's exciting to cover history like this and to hear how it's coming to life around, you know, around the country, around the world, um, with all these kind of museums doing these innovative, you know, displays. But well, it's more than a display. It's an experience. And that is beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Fire Monkey. Well, thank you. And until next time. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you.